Hi, I'm going to show you how to play Time is Dancing by Ben Howard. This is based on an acoustic performance of the song and not the studio version that you'll hear on I Forget Where We Were. I will put a link to the YouTube video of Ben performing this acoustic version on the blurb that goes with this tutorial. First of all, the tuning for this, there's no capo involved. The first string, C, and then F, B flat, F, another F, and then C to finish. Now, arguably, it doesn't really matter what you tune the 5th, 4th and 3rd strings to because the way that Ben plays it on the acoustic version he only really uses the bass string and the first two strings. However, if you want to play the introduction solo that I did when I did the cover of this song then you need to tune it the same as I've tuned my guitar. So again, C, F, B flat, F, F, C. Okay. So the tab's going to appear on screen for the introduction that I played and there's there's quite a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs that go with this to to give it the phrasing that it has. So if you if you look for those as I'm as I'm playing. I'll play through the introduction slowly. Okay, so just a few pointers there then. When I when I finished the, the first sequence and go into the same pattern again. This bit that's done on one pluck and it's all hammer-ons and hammer offs, so pluck on off off hammer. Okay, I'm going to play through that introduction slowly again. Let that fourth string ring out as you play through the sequence. the bass string, 5th fret, and that brings you nicely round to be in the same key position as that first note of the, the actual song. The, the main riff, the main, the main sequence that, that figures in this song, start with middle finger, 5th fret, 6th string, 1st finger, 4th fret, 2nd string. So one, two, three, four, and then to seven, five, same fingers, same strings, but fret seven and five. So one, two, three, four. And then this next bit is, the phrasing on this is critical. You start on the 10th and the 9th, and you're sliding first of all to the 7th and 5th. So, and then drop back to four, five, up to 9-7 and I'll show you what it's not it's not like this you need to pluck once, slide to second position pluck again, slide to fourth position oh, that was rubbish 
So you need to pluck first of all and slide to the second position, pluck again and slide to the fourth position and then pluck again as you get back down to the 3-2 position there. So that sequence again. Now at the moment I'm playing this acoustically and I'm playing it straight into a single condenser mic. And that's just for the purpose of teaching you how to play it. It's easier if you're not getting confused by distortion and echoes. Later on I will turn my pedal board and my amp on and I will show you what settings I used to get that echoey ethereal feel to, to the way that Ben plays the, the acoustic version that he does. Okay, so you've, you've come out of that, uh, that sequence down to here, and then you're back at 5-4 again, and this time we're, we're hammering on and off with our ring finger on the 5th fret on the, sixth, uh, on the second string. So the sequence is like this. So it's hammer on, off, thumb, hammer off. When Ben plays this the first time round, he, he keeps the, the slaps and the clicks and things to a, to a minimum, so it's very much just the, just the notes, really. And on the second phrase here, you can either pluck the first string, or you can use your ring finger and hold down the second string on the seventh fret. It's the same note. And then at some point through the cycle there's a harmonic that comes in. So that harmonic is played on the seventh fret on the first string. Now the trick to playing the harmonic is to rest your finger, your little finger, just on the on the string, just lightly touching it above the fret, the actual fret wire, not in the middle, above the fret wire. And you want to take your finger off just after you've plucked it. Now the way I do this, I use the vibration of the string as the trigger to lift my little finger. So I wait until I feel the pluck of the string against my finger almost to kick my finger off the string. If you try if you, if you try and do the same two things together, you pluck as you lift it. Sometimes you miss it, sometimes you half get it. And, and really, if, if your finger's in the right position, you should be able to leave your finger there and it will still sound. I've still got my finger on the string there. <clears throat> so, And that, that takes us through the verse section as well. As you come out of that into the, the slow bridge into the first chorus, first of all, 7th fret and 5th fret on 6th and 2nd strings respectively. So, and that's... Um, Hold it in there, let's go dancing. Up to the 10th and 9th fret. I do believe we're only passing. Down to 4th and 5th. Through. 7-5 Wired again, now look who's laughing You again, that's 10-9 All you, all you, all you 4-5 And as you come out of that the second time 
you start to pick up this this slightly more clicky variation when you're picking. So I'm going to show you what's happening there. Put your first finger, second fret, second, uh, fifth fret, second string. Put your middle finger, seventh fret, sixth string. <clears throat> We're going to leave the left hand like that. I'm going to turn around a bit so you can see what the thumb's doing. Basically, the thumb on the click is travelling towards the guitar, clipping the string and travelling upwards, back down ready for the thumb strike when you pluck it again. Okay, so don't try and batter the string too hard because you, if you miss and you hit the guitar then you get a, an excessive sound there and it also leaves you flailing around trying to find your, your next thumb note that you're picking. So it's, it's quite a discreet action. So I'm doing thumb, thumb, two, strike, thumb, three, two, strike, thumb, thumb, two, strike, thumb, three, two, strike. And once you've got that shape, that, that sequence with the right hand, simply move your left hand up to the 10-9 position, and then back down to the 5-4 position. Thumb, thumb, two, strike, thumb, three, two, strike, thumb, thumb, two, strike, thumb, three, two, strike. Okay, and so you, you work your way around that sequence through the chorus, and as you finish it, you then work your way back up through those positions. So this is the three, two position, to five, four, to seven, five, to nine, seven, and then right up to 15 with your middle finger and 14 with your ring finger. Now where my guitar doesn't have a cutaway, I find it easier to pivot on my middle finger there and bring my ring finger inside, even though it's one fret down, like that. If you've got a cutaway then you might be able to do it something like that, but that's extremely uncomfy for me to do that. That works for me. Now she's gone between what to say and what she really means. So coming off that 15-14 position, it's 14-12, what to say, and I'm using ring first, what to say and what she, 9-7, really, 10-9, Re really, down to 3-2, and I am finally colouring. So I think on the second chorus, there's a, a bit of a bend wobble going on this note here. And then back down again. And then you're back into the the chorus, the chorus sequence. That same click. Thumb, thumb, one click, thumb, three, two, click, thumb, thumb, two, click, thumb, three, two, click, thumb, thumb, two, click, thumb, three, two, click, thumb, thumb, two, click, thumb. There's some variations you can put in there as well. If you, if you are um, in this seven five position, maybe hold down this third string on the seventh fret it replicates that C that's played on the first string so just just play with the picking pattern there it works better up on the tenth and the ninth fret here with this with your ring finger being added on the tenth tenth fret third string there And if you're really cheeky, you can get your little finger on the 10th fret there as well. And then 
and back down. Hold it in there, let's go dancing. I do believe we're only passing through. And so on. And that's that's basically the, the various shapes that you need to go through the song. So what I'm going to do next is turn on my amp and my pedal board and I'm going to go through and sequence the the pedals that I have on my pedal board that allow me to to create that, that similar ethereal sound. Okay, the, the more observant amongst you will have noticed that I've added a, a feedback buster to the sound hole. This is basically like a plug, literally like a rubber plug, and it helps to just calm the noise movement, bouncing around inside the, the body of the guitar and the amount of vibration taking place on the, on the top here. So that just makes the guitar less sensitive to feeding back from the amp. So all I have at the moment is the signal going straight into the amp and I'm on the, the, uh, the dirty channel, if you like. Uh, the gain's turned up to about 6 out of 10, and so... That's the kind of noise I'm getting at the moment without doing anything to it at all. So the first pedal I turn on is my EQ pedal. Okay, and that's, that's calmed the sound a little bit. That's without. And that's with. And what the EQ is doing is it's rolling off some of the low bass, bass frequencies that just kind of muddy up the sound really. And it's also scooping out some of the mid range. So some of the frequencies around 1 and 2,000, 1 and 2000 kilohertz. Those, those frequencies are the slightly irritating treble frequencies and so I've just dropped those down and j just from exper experimentation that's what I find to be a pleasant sound from my guitar and then up towards the higher frequencies I've brought the levels back up again just to add the the, the air and sparkle that everybody talks about with acoustic guitars. The next pedal is the compressor pedal and this doesn't actually do much that you can really hear <laughs> Okay, this is without. And then if I put it on, <clears throat> it just saves me getting any volume spikes and surprises. So this the sounds the sounds now reasonably pleasant. So the next thing to do is to get the, the echo on. So I've got my delay, delay pedal turned on now and I have the settings such that that's the sort of the speed of the echo I'm, I'm looking at there. That's, that's sounding pretty good now. Possibly a little bit fast. So the, the final effect I added then was I added the reverb. And this is my Hall of Fame reverb pedal. Hello. And my guitar is picking up my voice. <coughs> So the Hall of Fame's on now, and this is set on, on the Hall setting, so it adds quite a, quite a grand amount of reverb, but then again I've got the decay and the level of that reverb turned down quite a lot, so... Okay, 
So, so hopefully that gives you some insight into into creating that that sort of sound with with an acoustic. If you're gonna if you're gonna go the the amplified route with the acoustic, then I made the mistake first of all of buying an amp that had effects built into it, and it didn't have valves in it. And having a valve amp such as I have makes a massive difference to the the dynamic response of of the amp to different strengths of picking. So if you pluck a string hard, the amount of, of distortion and the the gritty feedback you get is is uh, a world apart with with a valve amp versus a solid state amp. So I so I had a I have a nice it's a, it's a good amp it's a Roland Cube forty XL but it's not getting much use these days. The amp I'm using is a, a Bugera Vintage twenty two, which has a, a nice feature of being able to switch to eleven watts as opposed to the full twenty two watts that it will it will generate for through the valves and that allows me to use it in a sort of a bedroom sort of small performance venue uh, mode rather than cranking it out at 22 watts where I would have to turn the thing up a lot to get the that kind of breakup sound that's that's going with the the sound you're hearing there and the other thing is as well is, is having the pedals you get much more control over over the way you shape your sound and plus it's, it's quite a it's quite a fun habit to start collecting the pedals as well and Certainly you get a few raised eyebrows if you turn up an open mic with your pedal board and an acoustic guitar. The feedback buster is also pretty essential as well. Okay, I think that covers it. As usual, if you, if you like what you've seen, then please click like, please subscribe. I am going to do a channel update. I've had quite a lot of interest in, in my channel over the, the last three months. I think we're well over 350 subscribers now. And yeah, thing, things, are, things are looking good. So I'll do a proper channel update in due course. Thank you for watching.